Hello, my friends. I just had a hernia surgery, an inguinal hernia down in the groin. And like with my other surgery, I have opted not to use any painkillers, any drugs. The reason I'm sharing this is not to say, wow, look at me, how tough I am, but to bring forth a concept that I think most of us understand deep inside of us, but Marcus Aurelius spoke to it very often in his meditations. You probably know about Marcus Aurelius, Stoic philosopher, and he really made Stoicism tangible, accessible, digestible for many of us. He speaks about a fire that we all have inside of us. And as the outside world, as other things, obstacles, challenges come into our life, they can extinguish that fire, or that fire can consume those obstacles, integrate them, and grow in strength. If you have a campfire, you know how this works. You bring a whole pile of leaves and sticks and you throw it onto a little campfire, you're likely to smother it. Over if you've built a big, strong fire that has good coals and heart, then almost anything that you put into it, it's just going to make that fire grow. Fire may not be the most apt metaphor today because we see literal fires burning in the streets. And we see the fire of, of hatred and anger and repressed emotions bursting forth. But Aurelius's gift of that idea of fire burning within us, it's, it's still very relevant. And we can think of it in our, our own being, because if you're like me at all, it's very easy to intake more news than we should probably be intaking. And we start to see all these things happening in the world. We know in the back of our minds that we're being given a slant, that we're not seeing the full picture, that if you have friends in the city of Minneapolis, let's say, as I do, and you speak to them, you're going to find that the mass of people are reaching out to each other, are cleaning up streets, are helping other people out. Then there are a few people that are waging this kind of mass destruction. And then there's people, a lot of people doing peaceful protesting. So we see that the media, our news, it focuses often on that small negative percentage of what's going on. But to us then, we get this picture that that is the reality. And if we look through YouTube, we're going to see anything from some YouTubers who are saying, this is the time, as I'm going to share with you today, this is the time to be our best selves. To others who are saying, pick up your guns and get ready to shoot people. Now that is exactly what Marcus Aurelius was speaking about. He was saying that we have this fire inside of us. If my fire is strong, when messages come in, oh, the world is falling into hatred and it's falling into chaos, then my fire will only grow stronger. It will intake that fuel. It will say, this is the time for me to be at my most peaceful, to be at my strongest, to be outreaching as powerfully as I can, to be reaching out to help whoever I can. If my fire is small and weak, it's going to be completely influenced. It's going to be taken over by those externals. And I'm going to be 
ready to shoot my neighbor because I have fallen into fear that our media is feeding us. This is all about what we experience in our external environment and how it influences us. When I choose not to take drugs for the pain of the surgery, what I'm really doing is I'm saying, here's an, an external gun input, this pain that I'm experiencing. And I have a couple different ways that I could interpret that or integrate that. The one is to look and say, oh, my body's falling apart. I have always been healthy, super fit. Yet in the last two years, I've had these shoulder surgeries, now this hernia surgery. It's like my body's falling apart. Now I know that it wasn't until my late 30s that I started to learn about proper movement in my body. Before that, I was, I was training horses and training the horses that nobody else would ride. And I was getting thrown constantly. I was being heroic all the time on the farms that I was involved with. So I got beat up by cows, wrestled pigs. In my teaching of martial arts, I was always letting students just practice on me. Even sometimes when they weren't at the skill level where they could tell where a joint lock was going to rip and tear and do some damage. So I exposed myself to all these things and I could really start to get down on myself now. Ugh. I've made bad choices in the past physically. I learned proper movement too late in my life. And now I'm not even 50 years old and I'm on the downhill slope. Body's falling apart. That is the story I could wrap around this hernia surgery and around the pain that I'm experiencing from it. Alternatively, I could see this as a, an opportunity. An opportunity for growth and self-evolution and change and say, you know what, by this time next year, I plan on being in better shape than I've been in, in my whole life. And to me, I see that as a very achievable goal. And oddly, not treating the pain with the, with the drugs is a route to that for me. Because it says, here's this stimulus that while well, working out is gonna be painful that I could resist and fight against, or I can just let it in and say, this is part of the healing process. I open myself to that, and then I increase my ability to intake more powerful things from outside. So by not pay, taking the drugs, I am building that fire inside of me. As we do this in life, I think it makes sense to know when something is too big for us. I have a friend right now who's experiencing some things that are really, really big. There might be an operation that you're, you've had or a health condition you've had where the pain is too great for you to currently absorb it or integrate it. And we might look at any of our life, cir life circumstances or we might look at the world circumstances and say, this is too powerful for me right now. There are times in my life, and I'm sure you've experienced the same, when things are just too strong for us and we fall. What I mean by we fall is that that fire inside of us is extinguished or transfigured by the outside things. But right now, today, this is a vital time in human history for all of us.
to stoke up that fire as best we can, to see what's going on in the world around us, and to say, this is the moment. This is the moment for us to make this fire inside of us stronger. I'm not talking about the fires that we start on the street, but this internal fire that keeps you, you. It says, whatever comes in, I'm going to change. I'm going to use it as fuel to change the external into a food for me, to a fuel that makes me stronger. When I hear somebody shout out in hate, that's only going to strengthen the part of me that wants to see that they are hurt. They're hurting. They're the ones in need of my love. It's not time for me to hate back. It's not time for us to hate anybody, even those that are being most hateful. That's a radical message. And Jesus spoke about this, loving your enemy. Dang, love your enemy? When I read that, I say, he's not saying tolerate your enemy. He's telling me to love my enemy. Wow. That's something to try to live up to. And I have to have a very strong fire to do that. In the past, there are many times when I have hated my enemies. But I'm coming more and more. I'm building that internal fire to be able to love those that hurt me. Those that I see as walking down a wrong path. Those that I see hurting others. That's where it really is toughest for me when I see someone harming another person, another creature. This then is our moment. This is our moment to build up that fire stronger than ever. When you leave comments on social media to make them filled with love and positivity, compassion, compassion. When you speak to those around you to speak words of love and compassion. And most important of all, even though it might seem counterintuitive, the very most important thing is what's actually going on inside my heart. Not even my actions, but what's happening inside of here. I have to do it inside of here, because if I do it inside of here, it's naturally going to come out. If I just focus on the externals, what I say, how I treat people, that can influence my inside. But it, that's not as powerful as making the change inside first and allowing it to come out externally. The paradoxical thing is that this love and compassion, it's not about being weak or defenseless. In fact, it's, it's that weakness when I have a small fire that I become completely influenced by the things around me. And I have no choice but to become what is outside. When we cultivate a true inner strength, then whatever is outside of us is going to be coming up against that fire we have inside. And we will be able to influence the outside instead of the outside just pushing us around. Now, this is my call to all of us during these trying times is to find your most powerful self, to meditate upon compassion, to be strong in our convictions of loving our neighbors, to remember Marcus Aurelius's words that this fire, this is our inner being, and if we build it up, it has immense power not only to hold ourselves stable, but to change the world around us. If you're watching this channel, you're a person who is self-evolving. You're a person who is growing stronger consciously. This is what your friends deserve from you. This is what your family deserves from you. This is what your community and what the world deserves from you. Is a strong fire that is not just going to shapeshift to whatever comes from the outside. 
And if we do this together, the more of us with that strong fire, the more we can spread that power of compassion and love. Because fighting isn't going to heal this. We've been doing fighting as human species for a long, long time. And we've seen the results. It's more and more fighting. And more and more fighting. It's just history repeating itself. We have the riots today. We had riots in 2016 here in the United States. It just it, it goes and goes and goes. And it will continue to go until enough of us make this powerful change. But we haven't been taught how. All we've been taught is how to fight back, how to hate, how to just, ugh. And that grows us weaker and weaker and weaker. We must live by example, my friends. We must embody the change that we want to see in the world. We must become it. And that is our calling during these times. Can we end these cycles? Love to you all. I am so thankful for all of you, for the comments you leave, for the connection that you've given me, for those of you I've been able to meet in person. And thank you for being part of our channel. Every day, my family gets to sit down and read your comments, read your emails, and to feel like we're making a positive difference in the world. You, literally, are what makes this channel a thing. So, much gratitude to you. <laughs>